Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Love Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today is another grueling hot day here in Houston, Texas. I'm back out here at the shop. They called me out to come take a look at this 2015. This is a Nissan Altima. It's got the four cylinder 2.5 liter engine and the customer complaint is that intermittently this thing will not accelerate and so what they're saying is for the most part the vehicle drives fine you can accelerate however every now and then intermittently the pedal will become unresponsive they can put it to the floor but the car will not get up and go then after a few seconds of driving it'll go back to normal now the customer has already replaced the throttle body and the accelerator pedal position sensor i think they might have thought it was a problem with the etc system now the shop has told me that they have tried to scan the vehicle multiple times however there are no dtc stored so we don't have a check-in engine light we don't have any trouble code stored doesn't seem like we're gonna get much help from that so we're gonna have to start by checking out some scan data anyways you guys already know how we do it let's get started so moving inside the vehicle I've got the scan tool already connected let me take you inside first of all I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up so I've got my foot on the brake pedal and I'm gonna hit the start button you guys can see the engine does crank and starts up right away and if you look at the instrument cluster you can see that we don't have a check engine light illuminated. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the scan tool. Today we're using the Launch X431 Pro 3S Plus. I'm gonna go ahead and click on Intelligent Diagnose. It pulls it up as a 2015 Nissan Altima 2.5 liter engine. We'll hit Diagnostic. Again, it gives us some information about the vehicle. We'll hit Yes. Then we'll go into System Selection. Select the engine. Now we're gonna read fault codes. As you guys can see, we have no DTCs detected. So we're not gonna find any help here. Now what I could do while we're at it is I could back out of the engine and we could try running a health report and what that's going to do is it's going to scan all of the modules on the vehicle and it's going to let us know if we have any fault codes in any of the other modules. So as you guys can see it's scanning. It's already scanned the engine, ABS, the instrument cluster, BCM, airbag, HVAC transmission. So far we don't have any fault codes but let's let this thing finish scanning. All right so this thing finished scanning and if you look here you can see that we don't have any fault codes present in any of the modules. So like I said no help here as far as fault codes go. Well, let's go ahead and move into the engine computer and see if we can read some data. All right, we're in the ECM. Let's go ahead and read data. We'll go ahead and select all signals. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna focus on data pits that are related to the ETC system. That's going to include our accelerator pedal position sensors, one and two, and also our throttle position sensors, one and two. So I'm gonna go ahead and select accelerator sensor one, accelerator sensor two. We'll go ahead and select closed throttle position. I'm gonna go ahead and select engine speed. We'll also go ahead and select the mass airflow sensor. Then we'll select our TP sensor one, and our throttle position sensor two. And I guess while we're at it, we'll go ahead and select the throttle relay and this throttle stuck count. Not exactly sure what that's for, but we'll go ahead and select it. You can see all of our data pits here on the chart, but what I wanna go ahead and do is I wanna graph all of these. Now, the one thing about the scan tool is that it has an awesome graphing mode. You can see it drew up all of our graphs for all of our data pits here, and it gives us really nice detailed image of each graph. So what I wanna do before I actually go on a test drive is I wanna look at these two accelerator pedal position sensors, and I wanna see if they move without glitching. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to rev up the engine, and so put my foot to the floor and I let it off, and we'll take a look at our two signals here. You can see that they both moved up at exactly the same time, and you can see our signal peaked out at around five volts. So that does show us that our accelerator pedal position sensors are reading properly. And if you guys look at the throttle position sensor, here's TP2 and TP1, you can see that at that exact same moment that I snapped the throttle, the throttle body actually opened. And so, so far everything looks good. I'm gonna snap it again one more time. Let off. Again, you guys can see the throttle position sensors, sensor one and sensor two, they both moved up at the same time and they both peaked out again at around five volts. Then again, if you guys look at our throttle position sensors, they both peaked out somewhere around four volts. So far, everything looks normal. Let's go ahead and take this thing on a test drive and we'll see what we can find. Something I forgot to mention before going on the test drive is I am going to be recording this data stream. So if you look down here, you can see that this scan tool actually has a function for recording this. And so as soon as I push that button, you can see that this record bar came up. Now we're able to record all of this data so that after we're done with our test drive, we can come back and take a look at it. All right, guys, so we're on our test drive now. I just left the shop, so I haven't been driving very long. So far, everything's working great. I haven't had any issues, but again, like I said, this problem doesn't happen all the time. So we're gonna keep driving this until it acts up. And then when it does, we'll be able to go back and look at the data. A few moments later. All right, guys, so check this out. I just made a U-turn at this light. And right now my foot is on the accelerator all the way to the floor, but take a look. You can see that our tachometer is barely over a thousand and I'm not able to go more than like 25 miles an hour. So let me go ahead and get back to the shop so we can take a look at this data. 
All right, guys, so here we have the recording for our test drive. Now, if you look at the top, you can see that we have both accelerator pedal position sensors. We also have the engine speed or the RPM. We also have the mass airflow, grams per second, and we have both throttle position sensors. We also have a couple of other data pids on here, but those are really the ones we're gonna focus on. And so what I'm gonna start doing is scrubbing through the timeline here. And so as you guys can see, at this point, the engine is idling. If you look at our voltage here on both accelerator pedal position sensors, we're somewhere at around 0.77 volts. So that pretty much means that we're just idling. I don't have my foot on the pedal. Now, if I continue scrubbing through here, you can see that as I start to accelerate, the voltage for both pedal position sensors goes up and down. Now, what's really important here is that if you take a look at these data pids, they pretty much follow each other. So as our voltage goes up, on our accelerator pedal, the engine speed also goes up and so does the mass airflow grams per second, showing that we do have airflow coming into the engine. And we also see the throttle body is opening and closing in correlation with our accelerator pedal. So far, everything looks normal. And at this point, the car is driving just fine. We haven't run into a problem yet. And so if I continue scrubbing through the timeline here, let me show you guys when the accelerator pedal becomes unresponsive. And so once we get around this area right here, you can see that our accelerator pedal position sensor both one and two, our voltages are way up, somewhere around four and a half volts. At this point, I am flooring the accelerator. However, if you guys take a look at our engine speed, we're hanging roughly somewhere around 1100 RPM. Then if you guys take a look at the mass airflow sensor, you can see that we're only around 9.3 grams per second. Again, guys, I'm flooring the pedal at this point. The other thing that you'll notice is that our throttle position sensor one and two, our voltages are staying somewhere around 0.7 volts, meaning our throttle body is not at wide open throttle. Now, this is really important to note because if in fact we had a problem where our throttle body was not opening during wide open throttle command, the computer is going to see this discrepancy between the accelerator pedal position sensor and the throttle position sensor. When the computer sees a discrepancy like this for an extended period of time, it will set some type of code. In our case, the engine computer has not set any type of code, leading me to believe that this is being done on purpose. The computer is purposefully limiting the amount that the throttle can open. I'm starting to think that there's something else going on here, because if we scrub through the rest of this timeline, you guys can see that our signals are pretty clean. We don't have any kind of glitches or any dropouts in the signal. Both of our accelerator sensors look good. Both of our TP sensors look good. At this point, I'm not really sure what's going on. I think maybe I need to do a little bit more research, maybe check some technical service bulletins, check Identifix, IATN, maybe Diag.net, and see if I can find any more information that might help me out. A few moments later. All right guys, so check this out. As I was walking back to the car, I noticed that the brake lights were staying on. Then I also noticed that when I played with the brake pedal, they went back to working normal. So that's pretty interesting. All right guys, so I'm starting to wonder if our brake lights might have something to do with the fact that this thing intermittently does not want to accelerate. Now, is it possible that our brake light switch could cause the computer to make our throttle body non-responsive? I'm really curious. And so what I wanna do here is I'm gonna go into the scan tool and I wanna find any data pids related to our brake switch. And so if you guys take a look here, you can see that we do have a brake switch number two and a brake switch number one. And there's also this brake switch here and there's a brake operation judgment. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. Now let's take a look at these data pids. Starting with our brake switch one, you can see that it says it's on and our brake switch two says off and then our brake switch says off. Now at the moment, my foot is not on the brake pedal. And so the way I think this works is that the brake switch number one and the brake switch number two are going to be opposite of each other. So whenever the brake switch one is on, the brake switch two is going to be off. And that's how the vehicle computer determines whether or not we're pushing on the brake pedal. So I'm gonna go ahead and push the brake pedal and just watch these data pids. And so I'm pushing the brake pedal now. You can see the brake switch one is off and the brake switch two is on. And you can see down here, it says brake switch is on. So I'm gonna let off of the pedal. And again, you can see it switches back. So brake switch one is on and brake switch two is off. And so at the moment, everything seems to be working properly. However, I think what's happening is while we're driving intermittently, this brake switch is probably sticking. Okay, so I think the next thing we need to do is we need to take this thing for a test drive and record these data pids while we're driving and see if whenever the brake switch fails, that correlates to our accelerator not responding. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more data pids. We're gonna add the data pids for the accelerator pedal position sensors and also the data pids for the throttle position sensor, TP1, TP2. We'll throw in some other ones as well. Okay, so now that we have all of our data pids loaded up, I'm gonna go ahead and graph it like I did before and we're gonna hit the record function. Let's go ahead and take this thing for a test drive. All right, guys, so that did not take long at all. 
this vehicle's already started to act up, though it did start working again. Let me see if I can get it to stop working once again. See, I'm gonna hit the brakes and I'm gonna bust a U-turn over here. And we're gonna see if after I let off of the brakes, we lose acceleration. So I'm doing a U-turn here. And there we go. My foot is now to the floor. The accelerator pedal is all the way to the floor. However, I'm barely moving. I'm coming up to a stoplight here, guys, sorry. I'm gonna try to coast back into the shop and we're gonna take a look at our data. All right, guys, so once again, taking a look at the data, you can see that up here we have both of our brake switches and we have both of our accelerator pedal position sensors. We also have this brake switch on and off indicator. And so we're gonna start by scrubbing through the timeline here. Now, if you take a look, you can see that while I'm driving, I'm continuously pushing and letting go of the brake pedal. And if you take a look at brake switch one and brake switch two, they're constantly going to be opposite of each other. Again, if you look at brake switch one, you can see that it's in the off position while brake switch two is in the on position. So far, everything's normal. The car is driving just fine. Let me continue scrolling through the timeline here. And somewhere about this area right here, we start to run into a problem. Take a look at brake switch one and brake switch two. They're both in the on position. These two switches should never be in the same position. Take a look at the accelerator pedal position sensors. At this point, I'm actually flooring the pedal. Now, the reason I'm flooring the pedal is because at this point, the accelerators become non-responsive. Now, what's really interesting is if you take a look at the brake switch position down at the bottom, you can see that it's telling the engine computer that we're pushing on the brake pedal. If you think about it, that's kind of counterintuitive. Why would you be pushing the brake pedal while you're flooring the accelerator? I think that's what's happening here. The computer is seeing that discrepancy where it's being told that we're pushing on the brake pedal while we're trying to accelerate the vehicle, and that's why it decides to limit the throttle body. Now, the other piece of evidence that shows that is something I noticed on this last test drive. If you take a look at the instrument cluster, you can see that the traction control light is illuminated. That means the computer has initiated the traction control system. Now, another really important thing to note here is if you guys take a look at both of our brake switches, you can see that it's obviously brake switch number two that's giving us a problem. Look at brake switch one. It's turning on and off as I'm pushing the brake pedal, but if you look at brake switch two, it's staying stuck in the on position. Now, whether or not this is a problem internal to the brake switch itself, or maybe a problem with something in the pedal getting hung up, causing the brake switch to stick, I don't really know. I think the only way for us to find out is to do a visual inspection, see if there's anything in the brake pedal, maybe causing this thing to bind up. If not, this may be just as simple as replacing a brake switch. So let's go ahead and move back over to the vehicle and do a visual inspection. All right, guys, so taking a look underneath the driver's side here, I can show you where our two brake switches are located. So if you guys look up here, you can see these are our two brake switches. Now, I'm not exactly sure which one is switch number one and switch number two. According to our data, we're having a problem with switch number two getting stuck. And so what I wanna do is I wanna come down here and take a quick visual and see if any of these switches may be out of adjustment or something. And so take a look at the buttons on the end of the switches. I'm gonna go ahead and depress the brake pedal. Now, if you guys look, I've got the brake pedal pushed down and both of our switch buttons are fully out. Now, when I let up on the brake pedal, you can see that both of our switches are pushed down. I'm gonna do it again push the brake pedal let off of the brake pedal if i move any of these around none of them feel loose they don't feel like they're coming out so i don't think adjustment is a problem here all right guys so unfortunately i ran out of time today now it was already late in the day when i first got here um, i did have two other appointments today on the other side of town and so by the time i got here it was already pretty late but anyway they've already closed the shop down however i do feel like i got enough evidence and i'm pretty convinced that we have a bad brake light switch. Now, I already talked to the owner. He's pretty convinced of it as well. And so he is going to order a new brake light switch. Now, I'm not exactly sure which brake light switch is switch number one or switch number two. He is going to talk to the guys over at the dealership and ask them which one is which. If they can't give him the answer, then he's just gonna go ahead and replace both of them while he's in there. This vehicle's already been sitting for a week now and the customer is pretty eager to get it back. So they really just want it fixed. Now, as far as testing the brake light switch, I mean, could I have done some more testing? Yeah, I really could have, but honestly, like I said, I ran out of time. And so right now we're just gonna have to settle for them replacing the part and waiting for the outcome. So anyway, at this point, I'm gonna go home, wait to hear back from them tomorrow, and I'll give you guys an update. One eternity later. All right, guys, so fast forward, it's now been over a month since I shot that video. Like I mentioned before in my last video, I am running behind schedule as far as 
editing and posting my videos. I do apologize. I do want to say thank you guys for your patience. Anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update as far as what happened with the vehicle after I left the shop. So the owner called me the next day and said he went ahead and replaced the white brake light switch. If you guys remember, when we looked up underneath there, we saw two different brake light switches and I wasn't exactly sure which one was brake switch one or brake switch two. But after looking at the wiring diagram, I recommended that he go ahead and replace the white one that had the green and red wire. And so after replacing the brake light switch, they test drove the car pretty extensively and told me that everything was working fine. So after the customer came, picked up the vehicle and drove it around for a week, the brake lights started acting up again. So the customer took it back to the shop and the shop owner decided to replace the brake light switch relay. If you look at the wiring diagram for the brake light switch, you'll see that the brake light switch itself actually sends a power to a brake light switch relay, which in turn sends power out to the brake lamps. The shop owner told me that after replacing the brake light relay, the car no longer had any problems. Now we both found it interesting that after replacing the brake light switch, the car seemed to work fine for about a week. We're not exactly sure why that is. However, like I said, after about a week of driving, the brake lights started acting up again. And so after they replaced the brake light relay, they no longer had any issues. So hopefully this video helps anyone out who's running into this problem. I know this one threw me for a loop to begin with. Hopefully I can help you guys save some time when it comes to diagnosing this problem. Oh, by the way, one more tip that I would like to add is if you are having a problem with one of your brake switches and you're not sure which one is brake switch one or which one is brake switch two, one of the things that you could do is actually manually depress the brake switch while looking at the scan data to determine which one is turning on and off as you're pushing the switch. So just a quick tip for you guys. Anyways, at this point, I'm gonna end off the video. Like I always say, thank you guys for watching. I hope you found it useful, informational, educational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.